Hey everybody, this is Jam Lee. We've had answers from Selwood regarding our complaints as well as other letters and emails. So I have written a second letter to the Ombudsman and I'm going to read it out to you in full. This is my second letter to you regarding the conduct of Selwood housing against my uncles Martin and Ian Dutch who reside at 14 Cedar Grove, Trowbridge, BA140HT. One thing I would like to mention, I am autistic and I'm trying to give you the most accurate account from our end. I did make a couple of mistakes on some details regarding what took place at the meetings so after more consulting with Sue, my mother, Martin and Ian, plus emails and letters, I've done my best to collate, uh, I've done my best to collate everything to make sure to, to make it as easy to follow as I am capable. I do apologize for any mistakes and will amend where needed. We have recently received more emails and letters regarding our complaints about neighbourhood manager Emma Andrews and Selwood Housing, and I am more disgusted than ever with their attitude. I would like to address this further. First, the email sent from Paul Spriggs on the 26th, on the 26th of February. 2024, of course. We understand that we do not have the right of succession and that they would be allowed to stay under the use and occupation agreement, but the agreement could not be set up correctly due to an oversight on Selwood's part. The email fails to mention anything about my late nan Doreen Dutch's estate being frozen, having to be frozen due to going to probate for the reason for the rent not being collected for six weeks. Selwood knew this. My mum, Susan Cockerell, then paid the arrears plus two weeks. According to Mr. Spriggs, since the issue was rectified, no justification for complaint. I have to emphasize this. We wouldn't have known about this if this Paula, who I understand is a financial manager, hadn't called. The arrears would have continued without our knowledge. The first meeting January 5th, attended by Martin and Sue to discuss the, the discretionary succession since Martin and Ian wish to remain at 14 Cedar Grove. I need to amend the record here. Martin only provided his birth certificate, which was ruined by Emma when she spilt a hot drink on it. She did scan the certificate, but has since it's been misplaced, has since been misplaced. Martin walked out of that meeting, believing he wasn't going to get the house, but Mr. Sprigg's email contradicts this. We knew we weren't going to get the house, but what Emma said and how she was saying it was two different things. The form of uh, the offering of a form of succession, a way in which they could remain at the residence, but the language used forced Martin to believe that he and Ian would have to leave. The second meeting, January 16th, attended by Sue, Martin and Ian. Receipts as proof of address, going back to the time where both started living at the address, were given as well as personal circumstances. Martin moved back in 2017 
and Ian in 2021. As well as Martin's birth certificate, as well as Martin's birth certificate. That was what was asked for. The claim from <clears throat> the claim from Emma is that they provided some basic information. Right, I'm going to scroll down. Letter for the third meeting was said to have been hand delivered. And did not arrive at 14 Cedar Grove. An email would have been better or speedier. No one was home because the boys were at work. If a courier had come to the house, why didn't they put it through the letterbox? In that third meeting on the 14th of February, apart from Ian's birth certificate, nothing could be handed over because Martin and Ian had no information for what they needed, for what was needed. At this point in the email, Mr. Spriggs is making it sound like Martin and Ian were not cooperating in providing all material, yet with a simple email from the start, with details of documents needed, this could have all been fleshed out in one meeting only. But the particular language and actions Emma Andrews and Sir would have been have been using had made it sound had made hmm, let me try that again but the particular language and actions Emma Andrews and Selwood have been using made it so with so much time wasted I hope you got that right it's our family home at stake but this level of incompetence is being laid at Martin and Ian's feet and it will not stand. Selwood already has, a, Selwood already had a bad reputation before we came into the mix. Sue received a phone call from Emma informing her that Martin and Ian needed to provide all bank statements by the end of the week that would be the Friday, February 23rd, in which Martin's ISA, for which they, <laughs> which included Martin's ISA, for which they did not need. A mad dash had to be undertaken on that day to get the statements and given to Selwood. This is all the accurate information I can provide about the E about the meetings from this end. <sighs> Paula called about call, Paula called after the third meeting wanting to know if the temporary bank account for rent had been set up. She and Sue had a short conversation about what had happened and Paula agreed with Sue that what Emma Andrews and her associates had done was wrong. Someone working in Selwood's financial department, I believe her name was Rebecca, had noticed that Ian had put funds into his current account from a savings account because Ian didn't want to go overdrawn. She then demanded information on the savings account. All they needed to know was that Martin and Ian were capable of making the rent. That's it. She asked how much they could afford per month and they told her. We believe that Selwood were looking for an excuse to find something to lever the boys out of the property. Right, scrolling down again. Emma had said they wouldn't be left homeless, but that does not explain the one time offer to Ian and due to Martin having too, having too much money he wasn't entitled to a new home. This is from Spriggs' email. Continue. In quotation. 
Based on my findings, I regret to inform you that your complaint couldn't be upheld. And yet none of this would have happened if Selwood had paid attention to what we had been saying. As there is already a succession on the tenancy, your brothers do not possess do not possess a legal right to continue residing at the property permanently. But they were offered the discretionary succession. If they had no hope, why offer this? Please note that discretionary succession can only be considered for family members who were permanent residents at the home at the time of death. Unfortunately, individuals who had Unfortunately, individuals who had recently moved in cannot be considered for discretionary succession. Martin moved in in 2017. Over five and a half years. Ian's been living there for over two years. Why is this so difficult to fathom? Martin and Ian are on the electoral roll. So they are both on the system as permanent residents. The claim is that the house will not be sold, but everything will be, but will do everything to repair. But we don't think it will be a total repair since there is simply so much to do. There ends the email, and this is what's happened since, so brace yourselves. Because the last piece is a doozy. Excuse me. Martin and Ian has also informed me that when Grandad, Frank Dutch, passed in 2006, and I'll start that piece again. Martin and Ian also informed me that when Grandad Frank Dutch passed in 2006 and the tenancy passed to Doreen, no tenancy book was provided. In fact, Grandad is still receiving council tax bills. He's been gone for 18 years and the council know this. Selwood should know this. The only... The only tenancy book we can find was from 1964. No records of Selwood's book on rules and regulations, and Emma was told this as well. Now, we received other letters, uh, three from a planner named Heather Fox from February 22nd. She writes to inform that operatives have appointments at the property on the 18th, the 28th of, from March 18th and the 28th, as well as May 30th, between eight and 12 in the morning, when Martin and Ian are at work. So I would know the boys work in circumstances and it would mean taking even more time off work to deal with this. Plus it gives an indication that Martin and Ian will still be there regardless. As yet, no date of moving out has been provided. <clears throat> and yet we don't know when they will be moving out. Another letter dated February 27th from Zoe Ridley. This is a customer complaint, so customer complaint specialist, right? She writes to confirm that the complaint has been logged and will be investigated by Emma Andrews. Let that sink in. The very person 
who we complained about is now the, com the case worker in our complaint. person who we have complained about is our caseworker. This is blatantly, this is so would blatantly stack in the deck and there's no other way around it. As I see it, Martin has more of a, of a claim for the house since he's been at the property as a resident, as a resident for over five years. Taking care of his mother at night time while sisters Carol and Sue took care of Doreen in the daytime due to her becoming so frail in her last year. This is all the information up to writing and of this video I can give to the best of my ability. That last one had a spit in blood. The fact that the caseworker and the complaint the person we complained about is one and the same and they say they're fair absolute bullshit and we were talking about the electoral roll martin was there when we had the last election which was in 2019 the council will have it on their system selwood should have it on their system I don't know. Two letters to the ombudsman. I sent um, I sent copies of this to the Yorkshire Times as well, and as many outlets as as I possibly could. <sighs> right, that's 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 getting everything out. That's, I have nothing more to say. So, thank you for listening. Cheers.